Howdy folks, I'm Luke, aka Thunderhead289 at YouTube, and today we're just out here in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, we got the dogs with us, and we're just gonna take them out here for a run, but I thought in the meantime here I'd make a video on what I feel is the most important mod that you can make to a carbureted engine, that being the fuel return line. So if you think carburetors versus fuel injection, fuel injection adjusts for the elements and variable conditions where carburetors really do not. So the biggest thing with carburetors is keeping everything nice and consistent to it because consistent inputs equal consistent outputs. So in the case of a carburetor, fuel temp and air temp are pretty important to keep the same because overall that affects fuel and air density and then um, changes in density will directly um, reflect on your air fuel ratio here. So um, really some of the issues that you probably encounter with carburetors that really uh, frustrate folks is uh, you know one day like when it's cool out today it's 78 degrees it'll run great and then you'll have a day where it's like 100 degrees and it'll seem like it runs um, pretty bad now if you tune your carburetor for like I don't know 80 90 degree weather uh, and then it gets uh, you know drops down to 70 degrees you'll notice that it seems like it's running pretty rich and that's um, just because you're having a lot of stuff there where your fuel temperature and density is very variable and that causes some adverse effects so anyway the fuel return line really helps to clean all that up we can sit here and idle all day and as long as you have a good radiator and your temp isn't run away on you your air fuel ratio will stay you know pretty much the same so um, our test mule today is our old kind of daily driver style 74 F100. It's a budget build. I've had it since high school. So um, it started out, um, you know, with a kind of a budget idea behind the build, I guess. And I've just tried to keep with that all through the years. So I've had it for 10, 12 years now. It's a um, stock roller 302 out of a 94 Bronco that's been converted to carburation with a Protronics distributor there so we have a rev limiter and we can adjust our timing curve and then it is five speed swapped with an old four banger uh, five speed out of a mustang 2.3 liter unit and that's been here for 10 years done a good job and i do have a video going through of how i did all that if you're interested in f100 stuff but um anyway so with that let's jump out and we'll uh, look at the return line system we're going to let it idle here and we'll just get a reading on our air fuel ratio as you can see um, I did set it up for a little bit warmer temp you will have a little bit of variability of course underhood heat is going to be affected versus you know 100, 100 degree day versus a 70 degree day here today but anyway we'll just let it idle um, we do have one thing about the air fuel ratio gauge is with um, ethanol if you're not reading in lambda it's a little bit different so normally, you know, on a hot day, we're around 13 and a half. We're just a little bit richer here today uh, at 13, but not a big deal. So anyway, let me start my timer here on my phone, and then we'll go ahead and um, go through the thing, uh, the parts and pieces, and then we'll come back. I can figure out how to work my phone here. All right, and then we'll come back and check, and everything should be the same. And then I actually up under the hood there i do have a little shutoff valve so we can turn it into a deadhead system and we can watch our air fuel ratio just run away on us so um again let's jump out there and then have a look at how we have it set up all right so here's the old f100 here and my good buddies in the back just itching to get out um but anyway again nothing special this is just a driver truck it's got a 500 CFM carburetor, again, stock engine. It's just designed to, um, you know, more or less get good fuel economy and have good low end torque. And it definitely does that with the five speed. But um, nothing too crazy here. So some of the important pieces to the fuel return line system is you definitely have to have an electric pump, a mechanical pump. Um, the gallon per hour rating on that is variable based on your RPM. Obviously more RPM, the more that pump is pumping. So an electric pump, we keep a nice consistent flow and we're bypassing fuel. So normally on a deadhead system, 
at idle this fuel would just be sitting here and getting real hot but with our return system the fuel is coming up going through the carburetor and then going through our regulator and then returning back to the tank so um, nothing too special there you definitely want to have a return regulator and I did make a little fabricated uh, mount back here and I have some extras it's kind of a prototype it wouldn't work for a Chevrolet but for a Ford it's all right should accommodate Holly and Edelbrock designs but that's real nice where you can hang the uh, regulator right off the back of the carburetor and it just it's a nice and consolidated design there so if you're interested in those and I will put all the links to everything here that I used in this video uh, below so if you want to replicate it you could um, those are a Thunderhead 289 special <laughs> piece but I do have some and I could make more if that interests anybody so anyway of course we're running back to the tank nothing special now on the F100 specifically it had a um, whatever it is a charcoal canister so it actually had a line from the gas tank and all I did was um, cut it down back a ways here and then convert it to a barb fitting and then um, I was actually trying to get this truck ready for power tour I didn't get my 65 Galaxy ready so I kind of ram jammed and that's what accounts for all the rubber line which I would recommend against running in rubber line but a lot of people do it and they get away with it just fine I intend to change this one but um, anyway that rear mount um, it just I switched it over to a 3 8 line and ran all the way up so it's a pretty small amount that's just 5 16 and it does pretty good now on other vehicles what you can do is there's actually a little cut in for the filler neck that you can put in and then return that way so I'll drop the link to that it's some Moroso part I can't remember what the part number is offhand but that's a pretty clean unit also all right so now we've been idling for a little while um, we're gonna check our air fuel ratio and then we'll throw our valve which again as I mentioned in the cab there that then turns us into a deadhead system and we'll just watch the uh, air fuel ratio just go haywire with this thing so we're still doing pretty good just under 13 and long we've been idling here about five minutes so about six minutes or so so let's stop this and reset it and then what I'm gonna do is we'll throw our valve out here make sure I don't get my hand cut off in the fan all right so now with that uh, flip there it's effectively a deadhead system so now we're going to start our timer and I'll get out and run the dogs here and let them out and all that. Go on. Hey. Sit. Stay. Hey. All right, Ding Dong is a little bit wore out now. And it sounds like our truck has um, started to make a different idle note here, which I'm sure it is good and lean at this point. So now it's a cooler day today, only like 75 degrees, probably mid 70s. And I can hear that we got stuff going on. So we're already getting up towards 15. Now, mind you, we were at uh, 13, even blipping into 16 there. It's just kind of all over the place. And this is all just because our fuel is sitting there. Our radiator is pushing that hot air onto our fuel line and it's getting hot. Now, if you actually had a hot day, like 90 degrees or so, um, these effects would be drastically accentuated. But as we see here, just about nine minutes and it's just idle and all sorts of bad. So you can imagine that, you know, if you set your carburetor up on a cool day and then um you know then all of a sudden it was a 90 degree day it would run completely different now your idle settings play in all throughout the curve they're compounding onto the circuits of the carburetor so you would be a lot leaner all throughout the curve because of this so and like i said this is a cool day so this isn't even you know even a great reflection as you can see there 75 degrees so um anyway just with the fuel return line, um, it just makes tuning way more easy. The tunes are consistent day to day, and it really makes for a good driving vehicle. All right, so I think that's going to do it for me here today. We're headed home. Um, hope you enjoyed our 
guest appearances here from Bandit and Chug the dog. So her name is a story all in of itself for a different day. But uh, anyway, I'll catch you guys later in some carburetor tuning videos. And I guess that'll do it. We'll see you.